so welcome back uh, today's uh, topic is control account control accounts or we can call it total total account so what is uh, what is a control account do you know anything about that in my previous session I discussed about control account not in detail when I discuss uh, prime entry books under sales day book purchases day book sales return day book so likewise we discuss so many day books okay under that topic I just briefly describe about control account but in accounting okay control account means it's an account maintained to control to control group of accounts so like a monitor monitor is appointed by the teacher to control group of children okay so you have the teacher here okay teacher appoints the monitor so you control group of children no? so likewise in accounting okay in control account what it does is okay it controls group of accounts before I explain the uh, control account we discuss about the uh, accounting process okay and the accounting process we have the transactions no these transactions will be recorded in prime entry books then this will be recorded in the ledgers this is the process no so ledger there are two types of ledgers one is general ledger and subsidiary ledger okay so you have the transactions transactions will be recorded in the prime entry books then from prime entry books to the ledger accounts so in the ledger accounts there are two types of ledger accounts general ledger and subsidiary ledgers so this subsidiary ledger also divided into two parts accounts receivable ledger and accounts payable ledger so accounts receivable ledger is maintained to account group of customers okay all customer individual uh, accounts are maintained in the accounts receivable ledger whereas all supplier okay payable accounts are maintained in the accounts payable ledger then how do you control this group of accounts in the ledger general ledger through a control account so like now we discuss about the teacher no the teacher appoints a monitor okay something like that in the general ledger we maintain control account okay this control account will control this accounts receivable ledger as well as accounts payable ledger okay so this control account is also known as total account because we don't account individual customer wise details we don't account individual supplier wise details what do we record here only the summary for example accounts receivable ledger let's say we have 100 customers so 100 accounts will be there but when it comes to control account we record only the total so when it comes to accounts receivable you have group of customers however we record in the control account only the summary the total so when it comes to accounts payable you will have number of suppliers creditors okay however we record in the control account only the summary so therefore 
since we have accounts receivable ledger, accounts payable ledger, in general ledger as well, we have to maintain two control accounts. What are those two control accounts? Accounts receivable control account, accounts payable control account. Is that clear? Okay. In a nutshell, okay, in the subsidiary ledger, we have two types of uh, ledger accounts, which is accounts receivable and accounts payable. Account receivable, you have group of customers. Accounts payable, you have group of suppliers. Okay, so these accounts will be maintained in the general ledger in summary form under control account. To control accounts receivable ledger, you have to have an accounts receivable control account. To control accounts payable ledger, you have to have accounts payable control account. Is that clear? Okay. So now we'll take a practical example to demonstrate how do we record these transactions. Is that clear? Okay. So we'll take this example. Okay. Now we have under general ledger, we have accounts receivable control account and we have sales account and sales return account. And in the day books, prime entry books, we have sales day book and sales return day book. And we have uh, three customers in the subsidiary ledger. Okay. So how do you control these customers in the general ledger? This is how we are going to demonstrate. Okay. Now we will take a certain tra some transactions and we will try to record. Okay. So let's say uh, 1st Jan. Okay, Peter, so the company has made sales to Peter, let's say $1,000, Sam $2,100, and Amal $3,200. Okay. On 1st January, sales to Peter, Sam and Amal, 1000, 2100, 3200. So what is the total amount? What is the total amount? 6300. 6, How you will record this? This is the first, the, in the accounting process, this is the first step. So from day book, how do you transfer? How do you record this into the ledgers? So you have general ledger and subsidiary ledger. So subsidiary ledger you have, what do you call? So this subsidiary ledger is known as accounts receivable ledger, okay? Mm -hmm. Accounts receivable ledger. This is accounts receivable ledger, okay? So how do you transfer these uh, transactions? Individual transactions will be debited to the customer accounts. Mm. Okay? And the total amount, where do you transfer this? To the sales account. Mm. Is that clear? Okay? So individual balances will go to the individual customer accounts. You can say sales. So individual transactions goes to individual Okay, then the total amount will be recorded under sales account, sales account credit 6300. Okay, so you credit here, where do you debit? 
to the accounts receivable control account. So here we can say accounts receivable control and accounts receivable control account debit 6300 sales account. Okay, so in any given point, okay, you have the total of sales account. So the total of the accounts receivable balance should tally with the individual balance total. Is that clear? Okay, so what we have done here, we have taken the individual balances and we have debited the individual customer accounts. However, we take the total balance and we credit the sales account and we debit the accounts receivable control account. In the general ledger, we maintain accounts receivable control account to control group of accounts. Whatever you debit here should be on the debit side of the accounts receivable control account. Whatever you credit here, it should be on the credit side of the control account in total not individual transaction wise. Is that clear? Okay. So, this is the sales transactions that we have recorded. Now we have sales return day book. Let's say on 2nd January, Amal, he returned $200 worth of goods. And also, Sam, return 100 worth of goods. So how you will record this? So you have recorded in the sales return day book. Okay, so this is the, uh, the beginning of the accounting process. Then you need to transfer, recorded in the respective ledger accounts. Since we have individual customer balances, customer transactions, you need to record it in the, where? In the accounts receivable ledgers. Yeah. So, Amal 200. So, what do you do? You credit. Yeah, you have to credit, no? It's a sales return. And also, Sam, you have to credit 100. So this is sales return, sales return, then how about the total, the total has to be recorded in the sales return account and accounts receivable control account, okay. Whatever you credit here, in total you have to credit under accounts receivable control account and you need to debit the sales return account so 300 and here 300 you can see sales return and here accounts receivable control okay so now we have recorded sales and sales return as well now we'll assume the customers have paid also. 50% of their balances paid. Okay, so in that case, we have to have a cash book as well. So cash book is, uh, we treat the cash book as a uh, prime entry book as well as the ledger account, okay? So we'll just open a small cash book account here. Cash book. just to record the amount received from the customers. Okay, let's assume Peter has paid 50% of his balance, so which is 500, okay. And uh, of this also, let's say uh, Sam paid $1,000 and Amal paid 1,500. Now you have to credit the individual customers, no? Mm. So we can say cash 500, cash 1000, cash 1500. Okay, so what is the total amount received? 
500, 1,500 and 3,000. Mm -hmm. So this 3,000 has to be, you have debited the cash book, okay? And you have to credit the accounts, receivable control account. Is that clear? So 3,000 will be credited cash. Is that clear? Now, after recording all these transactions, okay, let's say we are taking the balance to the next particular day, okay. Now, we have 6,300, 6,300. So, what will be the closing balance? Balance carried forward how much? 3,000. Is the balance brought forward? 3,000. Wrote down 3000. Okay, now this 3000, when you take the total balance in the accounts receivable control account, when you reconcile, you have to reconcile with the individual balances. No, okay, this 3000 should tally with individual closing balances of these customers. Okay, so we'll take the individual customer balances as well. How much is that? Here 1000. 1000 so balance carried forward 500 so here we had 2100 2100 so the balance is 1000 balance carried forward and this particular customer 3200 3200 we have 1500 balance carried forward so if you take the total peter peter how much is the balance 500 and sam how much 1000 and amal how much 1500 so these are the operating balances of these customers okay these are outstanding balances how much is that the total is how much 3000 so these individual total balances should balance with the closing balance in the accounts receivable control account okay so basically what it does it reconciles the control account is maintained to control the group of accounts where at any given time you can reconcile the balance okay so if you if you have the balance of 3000 so if you refer to the accounts receivable ledger you will have number of customers so individual closing balances should tally with the closing balances in the accounts receivable ledger is that clear so likewise so this is we discuss about accounts receivable the customer accounts receivable control account so likewise accounts payable control account this is for the suppliers so sup suppliers a group of accounts also maintain in the accounts payable ledger instead of accounts receivable we maintain in the accounts payable ledger so instead of accounts receivable control account you will have accounts payable control account instead of sales account you will have purchases account instead of sales return purchases return account so in the day book we will have purchases day book as well as purchases return day book the same way but the entry will be different so instead of debiting customers you will credit your suppliers instead of crediting your sales account you will debit your purchases account the same process okay so we will discuss uh, some questions relating to this accounts receivable and accounts payable control account okay so this is the example you need to prepare the trade receivable control account based on this information so you are given sales return these are in total okay they have extracted from the ledger accounts okay so sales return 840 credit sales credit sales what is the difference between credit sales and cash sales credit sales where do you record the credit sales are recorded in day book first mm -hmm. sales day book then from sales day book to the accounts 
receivable control account and sales account. Uh, okay. okay? Uh. But cash sales are recorded in cash book and sales account. Okay? So don't mix up. Uh. Cash received. Okay? Cash received from the customers, 5,762. Discount allowed. Okay? Uh. 342. Cash sales, 4,500. Bad debts, 45. Now you need to prepare the accounts receivable control account. Just open up the control account. Accounts receivable control account. So, sales return. So, first of all, uh, sales return. How do you record? What is the double entry? Sales return debit and control account credit. Accounts receivable control account credit. credit. Okay, so you can say sales return 840. So here you are not required to prepare the other accounts, huh? only you need to prepare the control account. So when you credit sales return here, accounts control account, accounts receivable control account, you are crediting, you will debit the sales return account. Next one. Credit sales. How do you record that? Okay. So credit sales, you credit sales account and you debit your customer accounts, total account. This is a customer account, accounts receivable control account. So therefore you can say sales 8678. But when you go to the uh, accounts receivable ledger, what you will find, if you want to refer this to the accounts receivable ledger, what you will find. So when you refer this to the accounts receivable uh, ledger, yes. you will see individual customer wise sales mm -hmm. debited to the individual customers. Mm -hmm. Then cash received, so cash received 5762, where do you debit, where do you credit? Debit cash, ah. credit control. Yeah, the total amount. So cash, 5762. Mm. Okay. Then, discount allowed. Mm. Okay. So when you collect money, we discuss under three column the cash book. Mm. Okay. So when you receive cash, okay, you collect cash and you give some discount. You understand? So therefore, how do you record this? You debit. Debit? The discount allowed account. account. You credit the control account. Control account, yeah. Discount allowed 342. Cash sales. Mm. What is the double entry for cash sales? Cash, you debit, sales, you credit. Okay. So do you record here? No. No, this is the receivable account. Mm. The customer total account. Mm. So why do you record the cash sales here? You don't record. Mm. So therefore, this is not relevant. This is just to confuse you. They have given the transaction. Mm. You understand? Mm. Bad debts. What do you mean by bad debts? The people who haven't paid. Yeah, irrecoverable debts. Mm. So irrecoverable debts means it's a loss to us, you know. Mm. So out of this much, you could not collect, you can't collect 45. Mm. It's a loss. So loss means it's an expense. You need to debit mm. bad debts account. When you debit bad debts account, where do you credit? Control. Control account. Because you will not recover this amount. So therefore, bad debts. 45. That's it. So now you take the balance. So obviously this side is more 8678. 8678. So what is the total? Balance carried forward. Find out the total. So what is the balance now? 1000? One six eight nine. Mm. 
Okay. Nine fourteen. Okay. So this is how you prepare accounts receivable control account. Okay. There is another question. Okay, based on this information, you just prepare the accounts payable control account. Okay. This is accounts payable control account. So this is opening credit balance, sir. Huh? Opening. Okay. So what is the opening balance? Eleven thousand six seventy. Mm. Okay. So where do you show this? This is accounts payable, mm. control account. So therefore we had a balance of eleven thousand six seventy of supply total. Mm. So so balance brought down. 11670 this is not receivable huh? this is accounts payable mm. check pay to suppliers mm. so what is the double entry cash credit control debit yeah so you can say cash or bank 10860 purchases return what is the double entry Purchases return. Credit. Ah. Uh -huh. And then uh, control account debit. Debit, yeah. So purchases return to eighty-five. Yeah. Bought from suppliers. So what is the double entry? So control account you credit uh -huh. and then purchases. You purchases credit. account debit. Yeah. Simple. Okay. So purchases. Fourteen eight zero eight. So this is the total purchases from suppliers. Mm. Okay. So supply account represents AP control account, accounts payable control account. See, accounts payable control account will have total supplier balances. Okay. So when you credit the accounts payable control account fourteen thousand eight zero eight, in the accounts payable ledger you will have different. Suppliers account you have credited that the total of that is credited in the AP control account. When you credit here, you have to debit the purchases account in the general ledger. Mm. Okay, so now take the total. What is the total balance? So what is the balance carried forward? Eight seven. Forty twenty-six four seven eight. No, how much is the balance? Balance is fifteen thousand eight hundred and thirty-three. Okay, so this is the balance carried forward to the next financial period. Okay, so with that we will conclude and we will discuss some questions relating to control accounts. Okay. Then next week we can discuss about next chapter bank reconciliation statements okay so we'll wind up the class okay thank you